Okay, Cash Kitchen Talks Pantry Dessert Take One. Today we are gonna be making dessert out of the stuff you just have lying around in the pantry. Crunchy peanut butter. Miso. Frozen waffle, cause I got it. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. It's so good. Hey guys, welcome to Test Kitchen Talks, the home edition. Okay, and we're here in my lovely, kind of lovely home. And uh, today we're gonna be making a little pantry dessert, okay? Pantry dessert, I think it means like a dessert you would make out of things in your pantry. I'm going to just be using stuff from my refrigerator, not from my pantry. So this is going to be called refrigerator. <laughs> this is gonna be called refrigerator desserts. Frozen waffle. Toast it up, all right? A little bit of Greek yogurt. Frozen blueberries, nice. It's real simple, okay? But don't judge me. Let me go get a frozen waffle. Boom. And the rest is, is really difficult, so be careful, okay? Pay attention, take notes. Be right back. Oh, you know what? I can't be living like this. Kids in dorm rooms. I feel like they have better freaking fridges than me. Yeah, that's it, perfect. The perfect waffle. So now we're gonna put a little bit of Greek yogurt on this. Shake the shit out of it. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, fills it up with the Greek yogurt and it gets like a little warm, little dairy product on a hot waffle. What could possibly go wrong? All right, we'll do a little bit of this. Frozen blueberries. All right, the Wyman family. Well, thank you, John, Liz, Nick, Sarah, and Tom. Wish I had a family biz. Leone and Sons, sporting goods store. Leone and Sons, bait and tackle shop. Leone and Sons, chocolate croissants or something. <laughs> this is raw carrot flour honey. Oh, it's delightful. I'm gonna drizzle that right on top. Yeah, oh yeah, all oh, you can just paint with it all over. Nice little drizzle. Some little mint thread, little mint chiffonade. And that's a beautiful thing, folks. Okay, oh, I forgot. Pepper, little black and pink, 50-50. This looks freaking fantastic. I hate to tell you. Maybe a little drizzle of olive oil. Just a couple little drops. This is real grassy too. I like that. If this was on homemade waffles, this would be a high-end dessert. High-end! Mm. Like I said, this is just a real, real pantry dessert classic, okay? Look at that. Put that on your wall. I have a deep love for Cold Stone Creamery, and my favorite flavor at Cold Stone is the cake batter ice cream with chopped up Oreos, peanut butter swirled in, and raspberries mashed all into it. And so I decided, um, as of right now, that I'm going to figure out how to make Cold Stone at home. In my freezer, um, I have a quarter sheet tray. I'm gonna put a damp paper towel underneath to keep it stabilized because we're gonna be moving and shaking. This is cake batter, but of course, just use whatever is in your freezer and breathe some new light into it. And then they grab the Oreo cookies. They have these like paddles, which I have this tool, which I don't really know what it is, but it's kind of like a sharp paddly knife. And then they take a handful of raspberries when I ask for raspberries and then they mash those up and then they do this like paddling and twisting and turning thing. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more ice cream actually. We kind of kind of went overboard with those Oreos. And then I'm gonna take just a nice big old spoonful of crunchy peanut butter. And then using my paddle and my spoon, I'm working these together to create my perfect flavor. We're all balled up here. Scooping it into my ramekin. There he is. My homemade Cold Stone Raspberry Delight. Mmm. This is pretty fucking bomb. Mmm. It's so yummy. Would you consider yourself a dessert person? I'm, <laughs> I'm a dessert person out October 20th, 2020. Basically, I eat dessert every night. Dessert can be everything from like a piece of cake to a graham cracker with Nutella smeared on it if I'm desperate. So I am making 
a delicious cookie called a pommier or elephant ear as it's called sometimes are those little spiral cookies that kind of like go in a, I don't know what, what you call it, like a double spiral. I love them. And this is a pantry dessert because if you have pie dough in your freezer, which I usually do, it's basically like a two or three ingredient dessert once you already have the pie dough. I have granulated sugar. This is like a half cup. Kosher salt, I always add salt. I like to add a little cinnamon. I'm just mixing it together until it is the color that I want it to be. So this is dough that has been sitting in my freezer, I think for literally almost one year. This, I mean, despite this dough being very old, it actually feels great. It's, so it doesn't really matter so much the proportions that you roll this out to. I'm just trying to get it into a rectangle. Okay, so these look, this looks good. This is egg wash left over from making wontons. Generously sprinkle my cinnamon sugar mixture. I wanna coat the entire thing. And now to form them, I roll in a tight spiral from either end to the midline. So you should have two even spirals. And now roll it onto its side and you're just pressing down. I'm gonna get my piece of parchment. I'm going to use my egg wash and the rest of my cinnamon sugar to coat the outside. And then I have this parchment paper here because I'm actually going to roll the whole thing up and stick this in the freezer. 25 to 30 minutes is great, but it's only been like five to 10 and that's fine too. Actually, it feels quite solid. So using this same piece of parchment, line the baking sheet, slice off the ends, and then I like to cut in half and then in half again and half again so I get all equal slices. I always have a problem with palmies where they unravel in the oven. So I pinch them together pretty tightly before I put them on the baking sheet. All right, at this point, I did what I said not to do, which is the pastry is getting a little soft, but we don't have a time to waste, so I'm just gonna stick them directly into the oven. So a little hotter than normal, so 375. Okay, so those will bake for about a half an hour, 25 to 30, so set a timer. We're pretending like it's 30 minutes later. I don't know how well you can see all the flakiness. The butter kind of leaks out and it mixes with the sugar and it makes the caramel. And what I love about palmiates is you get these glassy puddles of caramel that make like a lacy edge. It's just like butter and sugar and caramel and cinnamon and, oh, they're so good. If you're someone that has pie dough in the freezer, I would say make palmiers. Unfortunately, these palmiers kind of totally opened up, so I could have let them chill much longer, but they look incredibly delicious and flaky. Like basically it should look like a heart at the end, but not a circle, you know? Like that's a circle, that one's a heart. That's a heart, that's a circle. Before anyone's like, oh, a cocktail is not a dessert. What, a, what are you doing? Um, here, I'm gonna be using some sweeter booze to make a cocktail, which is the last thing that I have during my meal. That qualifies as dessert. If you disagree, I don't care. Cocktail time. Cocktail time. Cocktail, cocktail time. So I'm gonna make, it's called a black Manhattan. A regular Manhattan is sweet vermouth, whiskey, uh, Angostura. For a black Manhattan, you're essentially taking out the sweet vermouth and replacing it with Amaro. I love Amaro. It's my favorite category of booze that originates in Italy. Um, but now, you know, people all over the world make things that can be classified as Amaro. And this is Marseille Amaro. Um, and then you also want whiskey. This is from um, Mackenzie. I would finish a meal with either of these, but I'm gonna use both of them to make a cocktail. Two ounces of whiskey. And whoop, a little more there. One ounce of Amaro. And then just two dashes of Angostura bitters. Some ice and stir this for 40 to 50 stirs. So you'll know when you're finished stirring, one, the outside of the, uh, the shaker tin or the glass will be super cold, but really the best way to do, uh, to know, is just count your stirs. I'm straining this through a Hawthorne strainer, so it keeps the ice inside of the glass. Uh, we don't have any cherries here, so I am just going to use a little bit of orange peel, put your fingers on either end and just lightly crimp it so the oils spray out into the glass and then give the lip of the glass a nice little rub with it. And that is a black Manhattan. Cheers. Oh, what is it? It's like 145 right now. This is dangerous. I might just keep drinking these. 
okay, guys, you gotta need you need to do something in the other room. Finn, with me. Here. Two bananas. <laughs> Two bananas. <laughs> I certainly would not consider myself a dessert person. You know, I need balance and I don't just crave sweet things. In the end, I simply said, you know what? Let's just do our miso almond butter cookies. This does a lot for me from the standpoint of bringing tons of savory flavor into the cookies. And we're gonna dip them in chocolate. So what else is there to get fussed about? First things first, I need 10 tablespoons unsalted butter. My wife would be furious if I told you this, but she's literally on the other side of the tripod doing a Pilates class with her AirPods in. All right, she's, she's, she will kill me. Browning the butter simply refers to the fact that you're cooking out the water, but by stirring it, you can get a little bit of a better read on the color. All right, that's what we're talking about. I'm just gonna measure out one and a quarter cups of whole wheat flour, and then a half a teaspoon baking soda. So one cup brown sugar, our slightly cooled brown butter. So because there's no water content in that butter, they're not gonna wanna go together. It's only when we go to put our egg in that the water content in the egg is gonna dissolve the sugar. I'm gonna dig out a third of a cup of almond butter, a third of a cup miso, and then a teaspoon of vanilla. Now our dry ingredients can go in. We have like a nice dough. There's something so satisfying about scooping cookie dough with an actual ice cream scoop. Satisfaction. Dough's feeling a little bit soft to me. Let's do one baking sheet of cookies. Put the rest of the dough in the fridge and see what's what. Oh, there we go. Fridge is I like- bread would kill for that refrigerator. I mean, let's not feel too bad for Brad, okay? Like he's got like three chest freezers in his like man den. There's like compound bows hanging. Okay, so we're baking off one sheet worth. We're saving the rest of it. Finn, do you wanna hang with me? Uh, just to translate, that was a no, I wanna watch the Wild Kratz. I'll be right back. So we're gonna dip these in chocolate. That's what you guys came here for. So I'm using Guitar 70% chocolate here. We are not tempering chocolate here today. Just wanna make that abundantly clear. So I'm a huge fan of the half dip here. There's something about the way, you know, the half dip looks on the cookies when they're arrayed on that baking sheet. It's just so pleasing and satisfying. Mm. The miso, the fact that we brown the butter dark brown sugar, vanilla even, can kind of skew a little bit savory with the sweet. It's just fantastic. I love this cookie and I love it on its own, but dipped in chocolate, it's just like, you know. One cookie each. Excuse me. All right, it's Rick and I am still here in Mazatlan, Mexico. And it's been 83 degrees for the last 38 days here. So I'm gonna make you a key lime bomb. Basically you just dump everything in a bowl, stir it together, layer it and freeze it. And it's gonna be really, really yummy. So normally if I was in New York, I would probably have heavy cream. Here I have crema. I've got two cups of crema, three quarters of a cup of lime juice. And this is, four teaspoons of lime zest. Nestle's sweetened condensed milk. Here it's called lechera. Two 14 ounce cans. The lime juice interacts with the sweetened condensed milk and it thickens it. It only takes about five minutes. Blackberries are so incredibly delicious here right now. You just wanna arrange them in an even layer. I'm gonna take two cups of my key lime mixture to cover up all the blackberries. There are no graham crackers here. Uh, so I bought these cute little coconut cookies. Just make a nice even layer. If there are any little cracked cookies, just go ahead and fill in the gaps. So now what I'm gonna do is put a thin layer of the key lime mixture over the cookies so that they can get nice and soft. Put the rest of the blackberries down. And this is just another cup. I'm gonna put another layer of cookies and then just scrape that over the top. And then the last layer is the crust. All right, so this is gonna go into the freezer for minimally 12 hours. 
The one that I have in here has actually been in there for about two days. I have a bowl of really hot water. Dip the bowl in the hot water. Flip. <laughs> Yay. Pull off all the plastic and add some toasted coconut. So the nice thing about having melted the sides of it is that now the coconut is going to stick. I'm gonna dip the blade of the knife. And this is why they call me Sugar Man. It looks really good. And that is a really great slice, I have to say. A little berry, a little coconut, a little cookie. <laughs> oh my God. It's almost like a frozen cheesecake. And then you've got like the cookie, which is like an ice cream sandwich texture. And then the coconut is kind of toasty and, and nutty on the outside. Wow. That is really, really good. I'm making something that I've never made before, but that I've always wanted to make. It starts with an Indian dessert called Shrikhand, which is yogurt sweetened and spiced with cardamom and a little bit of saffron. It is so simple and so good. And my friend Kushbu one day was like, what do you think about putting Shrikhand into like a graham cracker pie shell and sort of making like a Shrikhand pie? And I thought it was a brilliant idea. Then I looked into the pantry and we didn't have graham crackers but we did have digestive biscuits. McVitie's, is that how you pronounce yeah, this? McVitie's. So many Indian families have digestive biscuits around. We have them with chai. I used like a little over a half, yeah, about a half packet, a little over half a stick of butter, some salt. I crushed some cardamom up and uh, about a tablespoon of sugar. And then I just pressed it in, put a shower cap over it to keep it. And what's wonderful is that you just chill it and it's good to go. So now we're gonna make the filling. Dad, this is your homemade yogurt. We strained it overnight. I've got four cardamom pods here. Um, honestly, mom, I'm not a huge fan of this mortar and pestle. <laughs> mom, how many mortar and pestles do you think we have? Five or six. Five or six. We have a separate mortar and pestle just for the saffron. Look at these beautiful saffron tins. If you don't have saffron, don't let it stop you from making this. Just sweeten it with cardamom and sugar and I'm sure it'll taste really good. But the saffron definitely makes it go the extra mile and it's so good. So now to our yogurt, I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar. Oh, I think it needs a lot more sugar. <laughs> last sugar, last sugar add and then I'm cutting myself off. All right, we're gonna first add our cardamom and then we're gonna add our saffron. So this is gonna add both flavor and color. It's very soothing, very nice, relaxing color. So I've got some pistachios, or as we call them, pistas, and I'm just gonna give these a rough chop. All right, so first we're just gonna dollop our yogurt in, give it a little, some waves, our pistachios, and then I'm gonna add the saffron threads. This would go into the fridge and set, I would say at least overnight, but we don't have that kind of time, so we're gonna try it now. It looks beautiful. <laughs> hey, wait, mom, the crust. I know. You should try the first bite because you're the Shrikhand person in the family. <laughs> Wonderful. Really? Mm, yum. Oh my God. It's really this good. This is awesome. It's oh, like it's cookie. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> this is easily one of the best things I've made during quarantine. <laughs> So when I think of pantry, I think of dry goods. I think of grains. I think of nuts and seeds. And I am going to make um, a sweet um, cooked barley that has brown butter, toasted nuts, and dates. So it's really warming. It's very comforting. It um, should be stuff that you have in the house. And I'm going to use a cup. And I've got a cup of milk. And then I need two cups of water. So for one cup of barley, three cups of liquid. And half a cup brown sugar. A zest, wide strip, big fat cinnamon stick. So that's going in. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt too. Feels very wholesome too. It's like what you would have in your cozy little cottage. Say you were a fairy and you lived in the forest. I feel like you would have grains and berries for dessert. If you have a mortar and pestle, you can roughly chop your nuts without even getting out a knife. Oh, up and over. Oh, Jesus. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to butter. 
Oh, he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. Do you have class today? <laughs> I'm going to butter toast my hazelnuts. And I'm kind of going to let the nuts and the butter cook and foam and start to brown together. Mmm, buttery nuts. Pinch of kosher salt. And I've got some beautiful medjool dates. I think this was like four dates. Three, four. So this is just kind of like a delicious, buttery, crunchy, chewy topper whopper. And while it's not hot, I can just pull out my um, cinnamon sticks. So I spooned up the barley with a little bit of liquid. And then I've also got the brown butter solids from here. Yum. And a little bit of salt. All right, so that's it. This is my orange brown sugar barley with butter toasted hazelnuts and dates. Put that on a menu. Mmm, I hope you make this. I'm gonna go back to my little house in the woods under a mushroom tree or whatever it is. To be honest, I have ice cream every single night for the last seven weeks now. Typically haagen -Dazs coffee ice cream. Um, there is something else, but I'm a little embarrassed to say, but I'll, whatever I'll say, like Breyers chocolate peanut butter fudge has been also hitting the spot. No judgment, please. Sometimes like if it's like hits 9.30, I finish dinner and I want to make a quick dessert. This is something that I can make and it comes together pretty quickly. It's kind of a mashup of a salted pistachio crumble that I made. Crumble cookie, let's call it a crumble cookie. So I'm just taking half a cup of flour, quarter cup of just regular sugar, third cup skinless hazelnuts that have been toasted, but uh, you could use any kind of nut you like. Coconut flakes that are unsweetened, and I'm using some flaky salt, but you totally can just use regular kosher salt. Some melted unsalted butter as well. And you just want it to combine. So you'll see some like big pieces, some smaller crumbles like that. I'm just gonna scatter them. And then this goes in the oven, 350 degrees until they're golden brown and you can get that really nice coconut and hazelnut scent from it. I usually like to pair the kind of crumble with some kind of berry or fruit of sorts. So I have some strawberries and I'm just kind of hauling them and then cutting them into thin wedges. I'm gonna take this honey until it kind of starts to bubble and thin out. Turn off the heat and then pour the warm caramelized honey over the strawberries. Add a little bit of salt. Give a little extra squeeze of lemon juice and that'll get the juices going. I have the cookies out of the oven. You want them to cool for like 10 minutes so they firm up. But I'll just whip cream to soft peaks. Do a little mound of strawberries. A nice dollop of cream. And then some crunchy cookie on top. Look at that. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Pantry desserts should come together really quickly. They shouldn't be stressing you out and they should fill that sweet tooth craving that you have. This is basically like my version of berries and cream, but with a cookie on top. And that's it. Hey, bon appetit, what's up? No, 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 no. Ellie, Ellie, it's still rolling.